Hello, and welcome to today's video. As you can clearly see, we're in a different environment today, and I'm in Thailand. So I'm currently in the north of Thailand in Chiang Mai, in the mountains. And as you can imagine, this is a big change. And this has resulted in a couple of changes with the things that I'm doing for my, for my health and for my work and for everything. Everything's just completely different. And one of the things that I tried since I've been here is cupping. I haven't tried cupping for about two and a half years. When I did it the first time, I had a horrid reaction. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. So I, had, I so cupping is basically uh, a medicinal technique where they get these kind of like, they, they put like a little cup, it's cupping because it's cups, right? They put little cups on you and they, they suck the air out of them and it creates a vacuum. And what this does is it puts the fascia and the lymphatic sort of like tubes and the lymphatic fluid underneath, it puts them under pressure and, and, and moves them in quite a, let's say in quite an aggressive way. I would say this is probably the most aggressive way you can move your fascia and your lymph. I would say this is even higher than like lymphatic massage. And from a, a fascia perspective, this is even more powerful than like dry needling, which is you're literally sticking a needle right into the muscle, into the fascia, which you can imagine is very strong. I'd say it's like on par with that. It's, it's very, very strong. And I, I, I tried this and it's inspired me to make a video today. And I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you what I think about cupping, whether it's helpful, whether it's harmful or, or, or situationally when it could be one or the other. And I'm also going to give you my top three lymphatic drainage techniques. Having stagnant lymph is a recipe for you feeling not very good. This looks like headaches. This looks like just generally like pain in your body. This looks like feeling kind of tired or lethargic. This looks like low immunity. So just never being able to get on top of a cold or a flu or a virus. And that's exactly what I was going through. I had a cold or a flu for like the last two or three months and I just could not get on top of it. So I said, let's bring out the big guns. Let's try some, some new things. And I'm gonna share my results with you. And I'm going to share my, my thoughts with you about this and when it's, when it's appropriate, when it's a, a good thing to do. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to show you my cupping. So I can show you, first of all, you can see I've got a little bit of bruising here. You can see, and maybe you can see further on my neck. I'll also either stick some video, some pictures up here on YouTube, or if it's on Facebook, I'll stick some in the, in the comments below. My cupping was, was profoundly powerful. The darker the bruising, when you do it, the, the more stagnant the lymph was in that area the more the the cells were being bathed in toxicity and the ones that were right on the back of my head here they were black they were absolutely like the the darkest purple that you could possibly imagine i also had four down my right shoulder blade until under my arm here these were all dark purple as well but the ones up here were the worst the day that i got this done i actually felt fine i felt great my neck had been really stiff and i've, I've had like upper cervical problems for for a very long time I've been in and out of the chiropractor's office for like, I must have spent at least a thousand hours in there with five years worth of, of visits. And like, this is a, a, a more chronic problem for me. So I'm always like trying new things to get to the next level. And it's, it's working. Okay. It's a, it's a slow and steady process and, and it's working. As I said, I tried doing this two and a half years ago. It absolutely killed me. It gave me a, a horrible headache, like all the way up here. I literally had to lay in bed with my eyes closed. And this was a little while after I healed from like the, the blindness kind of thing that I had going on. I literally had to lay in bed with my eyes closed for like 48 hours, just in the dark, not do anything. I just, it was too much. And this is because it pulled so much of this cellular toxicity out of my, out of my cells. And it caused my lymphatic system to become so stimulated. It activated a bunch of viruses. It, my body couldn't take those toxins like out of my, out of my body and like process them through the liver, through the digestive system, through the kidneys. So they were just recirculating and I just felt awful. And th that's when this kind of thing can be harmful. Like if your body doesn't have the capacity to handle what you are stirring up and pulling out, you will feel worse. And generally feeling worse is a bad sign. It means that what you've done is not right. Either it's the wrong thing for you or it was too powerful, or it's not the right time. One, one of those things. In that situation for me, it just was not the right time. Cupping for me is clearly a very powerful modality. So it's something that's great for me, but back then I just simply couldn't handle that. So 
fast forward to two or three days ago, I did it again. I, I, I was telling him, I, I have very strong reactions to cupping. I haven't done it in two and a half, three years, but I'm happy to give it a shot. And we tried it. And the day of, I felt great. The following day, I, my neck was just incredibly stiff on, on the right side. This is where I have more of my problems. Incredibly stiff. And it triggered this, this, this like crazy gut reaction. Like through my, through my process, whenever my, whenever my gut is struggling, it impacts everything. Like everything goes wrong if my gut goes wrong. And this, this triggered my gut in a really bad way. This makes sense if you understand that your lymphatic system actually drains into your gut. Yeah, some of it does drain through your kidneys and you urinate some out. Most of your lymph drains into your gut. We're talking like 80%. All your lymph nodes from your legs, up, they, they drain up. And from your upper body, they drain down. Like Think about your sinuses. Think about the lymphatic system that you have here. Like This all goes into your throat. This all goes down into your, into your gut and it drains into your gut. And the reason for this is your gut is full of lots of different types of lymphatic cells. So there's some called like Peyer's patches that like, you don't really need to know the names, but there's a bunch of different lymph tissues in the gut. And all of this drains here because your gut is where you're very, you're very pow you're, you have a very powerful immune system in your gut. You've got lots of like beneficial bacteria. You've got lots of different immune cells. Your gut is like really the seat of your immune system. So these things are all drain there and doing this, 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 cupping being a very powerful detox caused this massive drainage into my gut that my gut wasn't really ready to handle at that time and it caused like a really bad reaction and I had to cut back on a bunch of foods like for me I I, I for a very long time for about five years I had to only eat five foods that's all I could handle since then my diet has broadened and I can basically eat within reason like kind of whatever I want and when I say within reason like I can do gluten I can do dairy the only things I struggle with a little bit are some like nuts and seeds and and having too much fiber and even that is improving over time but this this triggered this reaction and it just it just shut my gut down like i couldn't handle anything and all i was eating was basically chicken soup and i had some spaghetti bolognese with some oh the, the food here in, in chiang mai is amazing there's a restaurant that's literally just around the corner they do like organic food like fresh pasta when they when when you buy like chicken soup there it's made with like with like not not even just bone broth like proper like chicken meat stock like with the cartilage and the skin and it's it's uh, oh it's amazing it's exactly what i what i needed so being here is really cool i can just go on my phone order it and they just send it straight to my house so i was feeling really crap and just got some like chicken soup delivered and i went there and had some as well so i've just been having like super simple food for me and it took me like two or three days to recover but i actually think i'm ready for this right now i think before i wasn't like being blacked out in the room for in, in my bedroom for like two days straight not being able to do anything that was that's a sign it's too much i feel like i've come here to thailand to like heal to the next level and i feel like this is a part of it and i'm, I'm going back next week and hopefully the reaction isn't going to be as strong because i've cleared some of it out but this really powerful immune reaction that i felt in my gut i also felt in other areas too i got a uh, the, the day after i woke up i had a really bad sort of like sore throat come on my lymph nodes didn't get swollen but my throat got very very sore and it's very interesting because i had this chronic like cold for two or three months that just wasn't going away it finally started to settle and now having done this it's kind of triggered it on again and now i've got like the the, the feelings of like a, a cold or a flu just from just from doing this so i'm i'm really happy with this it's definitely not for everyone if you had a reaction like I did the first time, it's not for you right now. There's other things you need to work on first. And you, I want you to think about the lymphatic system as a, it's a pathway. It, there's, there's steps that it moves through. And doing like cupping is pretty much the last step. Last step. You're, pulling, you're pulling toxins out of the cells. You're, you're forcing a movement of the, it's called the interstitial, interstitial fluid. It's this, your cells are like in this like, imagine your cells are kind of like little plastic balls that are floating in this just like massive ocean that ocean is like lymphatic fluid and that's where those toxins that get other inside the cell the cells like we don't want this anymore so it pushes it out and it just floats around in this in this basically this toxic soup and when you do cupping it, it pulls all of them out of the cells and it encourages your body to move the lymph that's stuck in in that area
and you you know it ha you you know you have it stuck in this area because you have pain you have discomfort you have like a chronic neck problem your joints keep coming out it can happen around other joints as well like your like your wrists your elbows as i've been doing all of this work my body clicks and cracks and pops like it never has before i had a trampoline accident and my upper my upper thoracic so like from my from my neck to my mid back was kind of like frozen and now i can wake up in the morning and just do this and my my back is like <laughs> Okay, like clicks all the way up and I can just feel how loose and how much everything is moving. And these are all good signs that this fascia is relaxing, that the lymph is, is moving again, that the muscles are becoming like rehabilitated from, from, from my injuries. So as far as lymph drainage techniques go, first of all, it's helpful to understand what the lymphatic system is, how it works and where it is. So Anytime you get cold, you probably get like sore here. You have a lot of lymphatic tissue in this area of your body. Everything that's in your head drains into your collarbones. A lot of people have blockages here. If you poke these areas, if you feel painful, you might want to give them a little massage. You want to move them a little bit. Lymph, the, the trick to lymph is movement. Like lymphatic fluid is not a bad thing. It's actually an amazing thing. What is bad is stagnation. So if you can move it in any way, that's really helpful. Dry brushing does this. So you can get like a dry brush. You can even do it with your hands. You can move it. You don't want to push so hard that it hurts, but it you should you should feel like maybe some mild discomfort. I get a lot like behind my jaws here in the back. Kind of, it feels like sort of really beneath the ear, like here. This gets really stuck. And for me, when this is stuck, it feels like broken glass is stuck here. It's really horrible. So you just move this. You can do it in your face as well, your sinuses. The other big spots are under your arms. So you've got a big lymph, lymph node cluster in these areas. So you can feel, like for me, this is sore. This is really tender and really painful. And you can check the other side as well. You just want to move this, just massage it. You can use a massage gun if you have one. You can do the dry brushing. You just use your hands. The other space is your gut. Like I said, all of your lymph drains into your gut. So just a gut massage can be really, really helpful here. Just just moving it however feels comfortable, uh, especially on the sides. So the lymph, the lymph nodes are all the way down the side of your abdomen here. And then finally, you've got like in your groin. So on the insides of your legs, you can massage these areas. The best way to move this is actually walking or rebounding. Just any kind of movement that triggers that, that kind of movement of your body. You know, th this pump is like in an intrinsic part of your body and your your natural bodily movements move these things like this movement in your arm pumps the lymph here this movement pumps the lymph here and in your chest like moving pumps the lymph the best way to do your legs is just to walk so that would be my first step the first technique more more movement is really really helpful if you can walk more if you can do yoga or stretching or anything that is encouraging different kinds of movements is really really helpful the second step would be a more targeted massage on areas when you when you need extra help. So if you have pain in like these areas here and, and here, you would probably be looking at lymphatic drainage massages. So these are massages that focus on these areas where we have lots of these lymph nodes and these lymph ducts. And the, massage, the masseuse is going to massage in the direction of where the lymph fluid wants to move and where it wants to drain to. And as they do this, this can hurt a, li a little bit, but you should get a lot of relief and it can cause a lot of um, symptoms to resolve in areas. Like for me with my shoulder, I always thought like this is a mechanical problem and I do have a mechanical problem in my shoulder and my neck because I have an injury, but often the pain isn't coming from a mechanical problem. It's coming because the lymph is all stuck here. The fascia is all tight and it needs to, to move correctly. And a massage can be really, really helpful for that. And you would want to also look at the gut and getting the gut to drain correctly. So all of that, all of those lymph nodes drain into the gut. You can use visceral massage as a technique here. So this is a, a, a type of, of, of massage where you're actually having your, your organs massaged. So if you've, got, if you've got a muscle that is overused, it can form trigger points and can come stuck in a contraction. Now, this is true like for your trapezius muscles. You know, this is the most common place people get trigger points. The thing is, you can get trigger points in any muscle. So your whole digestive tract is this thin tube that has muscles on either side. You can get trigger points anywhere through your digestive tract. Your digestive tract also has lots of valves. 
or they're, they're, they're muscular sphincters. So they're like, they're like rings of muscle. So you've got one in your, you've got several in your gallbladder. You've got one at the bottom and the top of your stomach. You've got one that connects your small intestine to your colon. You've got, you've got so many. These are all rings of muscle. If you have a trigger point in one of them, not only is it going to hurt a lot, you're going to have a lot of discomfort. You know, a, a trigger point in your gallbladder feels like a gallbladder attack, even if you don't have stones or even if you actually have no gallbladder problems. It feels just as painful. The, the abdominal pain that we feel is really, is really um, connected to the fascia and uh, it's really sensitive tissue. You can imagine it's in this really vulnerable area of, of our bodies. So if we can release the trigger points, not only do we re release the pain, but we also improve the function of the area too. So all of these valves serve a purpose. In the gallbladder, this is supposed to hold the, the bile acids back. If they're leaking through, that's irritating your, your intestines. That's causing bile reflux. That's causing a lot of different problems. If you've got a trigger point at the exit of your pancreas, you're not going to produce pancreatic enzymes correctly because when your pancreas contracts to squeeze them out, if this muscle cannot relax properly, if there's a trigger point, it stays half closed and it can't flow correctly. If your stomach has trigger points through it, when you, because your, your stomach is like a crazy active muscle, it's like this bag that it literally inside your body like moves and churns and twists and has so much movement. If it's full of trigger points, it's only going to move like this. You're not going to digest your food properly. You're not going to produce stomach acid enough. It's going to reflux. That valve at the top has, has trigger points. It's not going to work correctly. Making sure that your, your visceral organs don't have trigger points and are functioning correctly is so important, not just from a like long-term healing perspective, but also from a lymph drainage perspective and from a quality of life perspective, like trigger points and, 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 and tight fascia in the abdominal cavity makes all digestive symptoms worse and it makes them way more painful and uncomfortable. So definitely get that checked if you've got these problems and those problems simultaneously. It's something I do at least once a month just because I'm, in, I'm on a chronic health recovery and you, you need to, it's like an MOT. You just kind of need to. It's one of those, it's one of those things that's really worth just periodically checking off the list because it's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. And finally, like final step would be like cupping and things like that. Things that are really focused and they're very, very powerful. But if you're trying to jump into doing the cupping and you're not doing the movement and you're not doing the visceral massage and you're not doing the lymphatic drainage, you're going to have really bad reactions like I did two and a half years ago. And even if you are doing all of those things, it's very powerful and you could still have quite a strong reaction like I did a couple of days ago. But it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's one of those situations where you're borrowing from the next few days to do a very powerful therapy on the day, but you have to remember recovery is important. Those following days, you need to rest. You need to relax. You cannot just go back to a nine to five job. You cannot be sitting at your desk with your computer, computer arm extended. You can't be lifting heavy things. Like your body is working. It doesn't just do the work in the massage. It's afterwards. The massage pulls it out. And then the time after it is the body sorting it out and, and recovering. So you have to focus on the recovery. You know, at least half of the benefits come from a good recovery. So take care of yourself and don't just rush back into your, 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 your daily life. If you feel great, then that's fine. Like you're okay. Your body isn't saying you need rest. But if you feel really crap after you do it, you better listen and you better take some, some rest. And when your body catches back up, you will be on top of the world you'll be feeling fantastic so i hope you found that really helpful overall summary cupping helpful or harmful i'd say de it depends well welcome to healing right it always depends but if you've done cupping in the past i'd love to hear about it let me know leave me a comment below if you think you're going to try it let me know as well i'd be really interested and if i've scared you off of it then also let me know it isn't something to be scared of but it is something to understand and it's something to use strategically it's very powerful. And as they say in, in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So use it responsibly. Hope you found this video really helpful and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.